Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. Um, if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, share. And um, yeah, for all my existing subscribers, thank you for your interaction. And today I wanted to talk about code switching. Um, there was something in the news about it recently, and I was thinking to myself, you know, it's, it's like a buzzword. What do they mean by code switching? Well, remember when Barack Obama in 2012 greeted um, black people different from um, white people? Um, when was that? That was when he entered the locker room of the US men's Olympic basketball team. Um, he greets a white assistant coach and how he greets the black NBA player, Kevin Durant, differently. Now, I don't think it's such a big deal that people have to make news over it. Because to me, I think it's about adapt, adapting to a particular situation. Remember, Prince Harry did it with the Springboks at South African rugby team. He did the same thing. He, even though it's kind of out of character for a white guy to kind of nudge shoulders, you know, it's still a part of the same thing. Now... What they're saying is, is that black people do it and there's some kind of undertone to it. It's almost like they think that we're not being authentic when we code switch. And there's, they, apparently there's all this research being done about code switching. Now, if I go to work, I'm going to speak how the rest of my colleagues speaks. And admittedly, if we're in the lunchroom and I'm around a bunch of black girls, which isn't very often, we might go into a little bit of our lingo. That is what they would call code switching. So would you call the same thing code switching when you um, see Asian women, a group of Asian colleagues talking together and then they speak to you in English, which is the same thing. It's almost like if somebody, if you've got two German people and they're talking to each other in German because they speak German and then you come into the midst and they switch to English. There's no difference. The fact that you're rubbing shoulders or knocking shoulders, it doesn't, make, it doesn't mean that there is this big new um, culture thing that's going on. There isn't. You know, they're saying that, well, they, the media, whoever it is, they're saying that, you know, why don't black people behave like that all the time, even in work scenarios? Why do they put on one voice for one situation and another voice for another situation? The fact is simple. If we went into a workplace and we started talking to our employers like we talk to our brethren, we wouldn't get a job. Simple. We would not get a job. If I said, well, I wouldn't actually say yo, but supposing, you know, being really colloquial, you say, yo, boss, what happened? You all right this morning? How would that be received? How would it be received? No. You, when in Rome, you do what the Romans do. So when I approach my employees or my colleagues, I speak to them in the same language. In fact, sometimes I even speak in a more proper tone than they do because a lot of my colleagues are quite cockney or, you know, they've got different accents. So sometimes I even have to lower my normal tone. I don't even know what my normal tone is. I kind of adapt. If I'm with um, the the people at the top, you know, like the bosses, I'll speak kind of a bit more. Um, I have my I have my telephone voice then. I'll say, oh, good morning. This is Black Bright speaking. How can I help you, please? And that's how I would speak. If I was at home, I'd probably speak the same way. Who's calling? I never, I never say who I am. I always ask who's calling. But then, if my mate calls me on the phone, I'll say, well, you yeah, all right? Yeah, and you know, that kind of stuff. So you automatically adapt 
to whoever you're speaking to. That doesn't mean to say that we are not being true to our authentic selves. It's about survival. It's about being, um, it's about adapting to different situations. And it takes, it, it takes a lot of skill to be able to do that. You'd be surprised how many people can't do that, who cannot adapt to different situations. They're stuck with the same, um, the same culture, regardless of what situation they're in. Some people just cannot adapt. They haven't learnt the art of adapting. But it's necessary for survival. It's necessary to be understood. It's necessary for good communication. So if they want to call it code switching, that's up to them. But for me, it's about being adaptable. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, I always look at my notes, as you know. Um but yeah, I was also thinking about code switching when it comes to people of authority, even like the police. You know, you could be there bunksing with your, well, if you was a guy with boys or men or males, you could be there bunksing with your brethren up and down the road, you know, laughing and blah, 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 and cussing whatever and, you know, speaking in a certain way. You see the old Bill come along and it's like, oh, good afternoon, officer, because you know that that kind of response will be less intimidating, it'll be more accepting, and it might even neutralise the situation. Now, if you continue with the same old brash way that you have been walking down along the streets with your brethren, they're not going to understand that. They're not going to understand um, that kind of, um, not culture. Well, they do understand it, but they don't like it. Put it that way. And then they'll start perceiving it as aggressive and hostile and all this kind of stuff. Next thing you know, you're in handcuffs. But if you learn the art of adaptability, it's about mirroring who you talk to. I think I did a video about that before. You know, when you mirror who you're speaking with to create empathy, to let the other person feel as though you're on the same page, that, you know, you have something in common. And I notice that, you know, when you're talking to people on the same level, they're more likely to share. They're more likely to trust you. And I think that's why I get on with so many people, because I can adapt myself to all different situations. And at work, I've got loads of white friends or colleagues, whatever you want to call them, or associates. And I adapt to every single person at every single level. I have the ability to adapt from the cleaner to the person at the top. I can do that. And I can just switch and it's automatic. I don't feel as though I'm being fraudulent. I don't think I'm doing it to put on an act. I don't think I'm being less authentic. It's just the art of interacting with people and being successful in that interaction. The thing is, when I'm on um, YouTube, I can't do that. I can't gauge my listeners. I don't know who my listeners are. I don't know what percentage are white, what percentage are black, what percentage are Asian or Oriental or white. I have and I haven't got a clue. So I cannot code switch when I'm on YouTube, which could be a disadvantage, or it might not. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, I just have to be who I am at a particular time. And depending on what topic I'm talking about, I might flip into Jamaican, I might flip into Cockney, I might flip into the little posh style, whichever. It all depends what topic I'm relating to and how I feel at the time. So that's got a lot to do with it. Um, have I got anything else that I've missed? I don't think so. Yeah, I think code switching also differs when you get home, like when you're at work, you have a certain persona when you're at work and you can guarantee most people, once they jump in that car and they're at home, they're totally different people. You probably wouldn't even know they're the same person. If somebody saw some of these people at work at home in their home environment, you might think they're totally, you'd think, bloody hell, I didn't know she was like that. 
So we all have different personas. We all kind of code switch as you as you would have it. But when they're talking about code switch, they, they, it specifically relates to black people. And for some reason, they feel that black people code switch in certain situations. And they used Barack Obama and Prince Harry to prove their point. Well, what I'm saying is that that's not code switching. That's just empathy, adaptability, putting your mirroring another person's behavior to um, to make the other person feel comfortable. That's all that is. So they want to get technical with it. That's up to them. But I thought that is what I wanted to talk about this evening. And that's all for now. Bye bye. Now I go now. You know what? Sometimes, have you ever had that when your mouse sticks? That's what's happening now. My mouse is sticking. I don't know what's wrong with it. So you know what I'll have to use? I'll have to use good old fingers. Bye-bye. Huh. It's not even stopping. Psst. I tell you, boy.